So hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back to uh, yet another edition of Overrated. I'm Michael J. O'Connor. I'm James Flutie. Yes, sir. And uh, this week, this is a special week, my friend, because this was a special film that we, um, <laughs> I want to say watched. I feel like it's more, get, we're subjected to. It happened to me. Yes. Yes. That is how I prefer to, to refer to Pink Flamingos. Yeah. It happened to me. Yeah, man. Um, Almost like a VD. Like, you're just like, I caught, I, I got Pink Flamingos. <laughs> if it happened... It was my choice to put it in, but I'll be damned <laughs> if uh, <laughs> I enjoy the consequences. Uh, yeah, I had to get a couple shots of something, and it should clear up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, man, it really... I Because this came out in like the early to mid-70s, right? Yes. We should I, probably know exactly when that... Yeah, I, feel, I think it was early 70s. I want to say 72 or 73. I cannot imagine the reaction there was to this because it is, it really is vile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, um, really? Yes. You know, it's, um, I don't even think I want to go into every element of how it was vile right. in talking about it. Right. Um, now, uh, what's interesting though, I will say this is that like, I think part of the reason this became so well known and attack and there was such a counterculture, you have to go see this film kind of mentality is because the internet didn't exist. Right. So you had this film that was showing absolutely disgusting things. The most famous of which yes. uh, is the eating of the dog poop. Sure. Uh, which was completely tacked on. Like it didn't have any connection to the story. I remember watching it cause I knew it was supposed to happen yeah. and going like, when are they going to do that? And they just tag it on at the end. No connection to the story. Just like, look what divine's doing. Yeah. And they really, John Waters comes on with that, like really over the top Baltimore and, accent that he's doing. He's like, and now divine will do the most violent. And it's so, it's so weird. Yeah. It's right at the end. Yes, that was actually an impression he was doing of a famous Baltimore uh, DJ. Oh, really? And yeah, because he wanted him to do the voice, the DJ refused. <laughs> who, who knows why? Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so John Waters just did an impression of him. Okay, yeah, because it is really funny. I mean, that accent already is is really interesting and and odd, uh, but he does it really over the top. It's pretty funny. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so, so he eats the poo. Yeah. And um, people were outraged and, and, and uh, shocked and, and or thought it was hilarious. And then you have this, this need to go to that film to see that outrageous thing. Right. Cut to just a few years ago, and you had two girls in a cup. Right. You didn't have to go anywhere. You didn't have to do anything. You could accidentally see two <laughs> girls in a cup. <laughs> you could, like someone Rick rolls you sure. into seeing that. Sure. And 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 Google in general. I remember the beginnings of the internet. I really loved the graphic novel Bone. Sure. Uh, oh yeah. I l- went onto the search engine looking up for Bone. <laughs> sure. In school, by the way, I was uh, in the like our computer class. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> bone who looks out really quickly. <laughs> bone you know, who, the beginning of the internet. Now I, you know, just like you're, you're five clicks away from some sort of sex act. Right. No matter where you want are on the internet, you can just slowly just boom. You're at sex. It's like the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, except you're seven yeah. degrees of, of you're, you're, you're just seconds away at any point. This is not going to be interesting to anyone, <laughs> anybody listening, but doesn't bone look like our friend Clark. Doesn't Clark look like Bone? And then he has a large nose. Kind of, yeah. I don't know. I just always thought he looked like... <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, exactly. And I, I think that it, it's pretty smart that, I guess, like you say, it was just tacked on at the end because then you have to watch the whole thing, <laughs> you know, which has a, a slew of, of completely um, uh, gnarly moments in it. Yes. You know, um, one of the things that I, I'll, I'll admit that I liked it. You know, I, 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 I thought it was pretty, 
the story itself is obviously it, it was that thing that we talk about all the time where okay what do we have well i can get us this trailer for like a hundred bucks i know this drag queen um you know that will kind of do it is my friend and will do whatever i say you know it really it has he had these elements and knew this whole uh what does he call them the dream dream land players something like that or maybe they're just called the dreamland yeah yeah i can't and blinking on what they're called yeah that which involved the you know the the whole cast is right. sort of the, the villains and, and divine and and uh, yeah edith massey who was just a bartender mm. you know um and yeah. it's, and it's hilarious and here there's a diaper in a crib and then he's obsessed with eggs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her timing <laughs> i don't know there's some whether it's on purpose or not her timing of some of the her lines obviously just because she had trouble remembering them uh is pretty there's it's got some funny moments um i think you know honestly i think john waters saw something oddly charismatic about her right. and there is something oddly charismatic about her. <laughs> yeah. yeah um he, he he picked up on that totally um, you know, there, there are things in it. One of the things that's, that's kind of impressive. I don't know if that's the word when you're watching it is man, there's no special effects in that thing. Everything, <laughs> <laughs> everything that they do, they did. You know? Yes. <laughs> when they're doing the amyl nitrate poppers, they actually do the amyl nitrate poppers, you know? Um, it's, uh, just in that it's it's pretty impressive <laughs> it's an impressive feat. yeah impressive mm-hmm. um they again they they had a small budget most uh, i read a quote from the the um, set designer <clears throat> which was half the budget went to the trailer uh-huh. the other half went to to decorating the trailer. Right. And then after that, we just started stealing stuff, right. <laughs> which you completely believe. I mean, these aren't people with moral scruples no. that are going to be <laughs> like, this is going to stop at stealing. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I can't, I really, I feel a little bit like a phony because I love John Waters films. Mm-hmm. I've seen Crybaby and Hairspray and, and uh female troubles yep. and um polyester <clears throat> sorry um what's the other one that i really love uh serial mom mm, yeah i've seen all of those probably like 500 times right but i had never seen pink flamingos and it was only because i, I kind of like thought i had seen it but wasn't sure right uh, i can definitely say i didn't because i wouldn't fucking forget this <laughs> um yeah, <laughs> but um, and I feel like how it feels silly to have said that I really love John Waters right. when I didn't see the most John Waters film right. of John Waters films. Right. And then on top of that, it's not really like the most John Waters film of all of John Waters. Films. No. And I, I totally see why you would love this film. Film. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for probably like two things about the film, I would have really like loved the film. Um, but yeah, it just, it made me more uncomfortable than enjoyed. Interesting. Um, yeah, if you don't want to, it's fine. But what, what are the things that really stuck out to you? I mean, you know, that really made you the most uncomfortable. I will say this if they, and, and I'm not going to say that I'm going to write them off. Yeah. I still love John Waters. Um, you know, there are worst sins in the world, but the killing of the chicken. Yeah. The fact that they they killed a chicken in such a brutally uh, mean way yes. for the filming of that one scene, and yes, they did cook it up and they ate it. Yeah, you know, and in John Waters defends it as you know this chicken was going to die either way. We got it from a butcher, right? This way, it got to be in a movie, but it would have had its head cut off, right? You know, like it would have been this really quick. Day. It would have been shoved between two people who then slammed it back and forth violently yeah so it just i can't it just doesn't settle well with me i don't like uh, animal abuse just doesn't it doesn't sit well with me that was that was one for me as well you know um i yeah. saw i saw a quote um from john waters saying that discussing that 
Um, and he said, you know, when a chicken ends up on my plate, I know it didn't get there because it had a heart attack. And to a certain mm. extent, he's right. But I do think... <laughs> there's, there's logic to the argument. There is, right. Uh, but it's not, in my opinion, a full yeah. argument. Agreed. Because, uh, you know, there's a difference between, you know, shooting an animal in the head and then eating it. Right. And taking that animal and beating it to death with the bat. Right. And then eating it. Right. You know, and that was basically the difference that they, they did there. They, they, they crushed this animal and, and beat it multiple times, basically. Right. Now, they didn't do it on purpose, but they obviously had no concern right. that that would happen. There was no one there checking to make sure that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And when you watch Which it... Which you would definitely have to now. Sure. When you, when you watch it, um, you know, they... they uh, it's not surprising that it happened the way that it's uh, <laughs> being handled. It's, it's odd. Man. Yeah. And that's if, And again, if they had done the exact same scene and then I read something and they said, Oh, the chickens were fine. Right. Uh, blood on there was just ketchup. It's fine. Yeah. I would have, I would have been able to watch the rest of that film. It would have been like, Oh, funny. I'm kind of laughing and stuff, but I, I couldn't. And it was a bummer. Interesting. I still love John Waters films. Yeah. Yeah. That, it, that definitely seems, um, pretty brutal and it, it's a tough it's a tough watch um you know i i had also read that the only thing he regrets about that movie was divine uh giving that guy a blowjob because they were friends and i guess it was awkward afterwards yeah yeah i, I did read that that's that's simulated and also consensual though so that didn't really bother me i don't think that was Even simulated it be like a mom and a son which is really disgusting yeah but they're not a mom and a son right you know like i don't really i don't really get when it's fictional it's fictional i can separate but you know like with with the the chicken it wasn't fictional right and there's a real consequence sure to something i just i thought it was interesting that he said that's the only thing he regrets from yeah <laughs> You know. uh, Divine apparently somewhat regretted uh, eating the shit. Sure, uh, it did make her sick, and, and they ended up going to like a doctor and going like, "What's what would happen?" Well, I yeah. think they actually lied to like their child yep. had eaten some shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, but she said that, uh, or Divine said that uh, he would meet people. And they'd be like, oh, wow, you're divine. And then he would see them slowly recognize and get kind of creeped out and go like, you a dog shit. Right, right. Like he would just see that in their eyes. And I loved how John, John Waters uh, responded because someone was like, yeah, that's, that's really gross. And John Waters was like, I don't know. I just thought she was being a trooper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much truth there is to that, though. I, he's got to know that. You know, that was that was on purpose and especially like you say, completely tacked on at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, John Waters also said that, you know, it was a little bit of dog shit and it made her a star. Sure. Um Yeah, so they got a career largely because of that, which is kind of bizarre. I yeah, I would I would that makes sense to because me. Because of how much I love the rest of his his body of work that he did become so famous for, for basically uh, gimmicks. Yeah. PT Barnum, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh that's true. But, and luckily though, he, he is a very talented writer and, mm -hmm. and filmmaker, you know? So uh, from everyone I've heard who's met him mm -hmm. from every interview I've ever seen, he's incredibly nice, mm -hmm. very open-minded, always hilarious. Uh, I, I continue to refer to John Waters as a national treasure. Sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. I saw him, uh, walking down the street in San Francisco one time. And it was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. I didn't say anything to him or any, anything like that. I just saw him yeah. walking through the tenderloin. It's like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> he does have a home there yeah. in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I never saw him. I rarely left my house when I lived there. Though. Yeah. I can't afford to, you know, here <laughs> he can't afford to also. I'm a show. I do a lot of reading and watching movies. Yeah, I Hence, know. there's a movie podcast we can make. Yeah. <laughs> that we don't have to leave our... Neither one of us has to leave our houses to do, which is fantastic. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> it's the greatest thing. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, th I think that... Uh, um, it's got to be when we talk... It's what we talk about when we talk about trash cinema is this movie. 
you know, because it's mm-hmm. there's no uh, ar- yeah, artistic it's, it's value. Quite yeah. <laughs> there's very little value to it, other than <laughs> the kind of shock value. Um, you know, the story's not anything. Yeah. <laughs> I do believe uh, uh, John Waters has been very open about the fact that when he wrote it, he was on a copious amount of drugs. Right. Uh, he said he was on drugs when he wrote it, but not when he made it. Right. Um, but <clears throat> I saw one of the deleted scenes, and it's uh, the one character who, who, and his wife, the divine son in it, right. and his wife. And he's just talking about how much he loves her, and he refers to her eyes as cunt eyes. Weird. And he goes, you got those cunt eyes because I love your eyes like I love a cunt. <laughs> okay. And uh, and then it cuts back to John Waters because he's like talking about the deleted scenes. And he goes, cunt eyes? What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, hmm. <laughs> um, and, and in case you haven't seen it, if you, if you, no. if, if you haven't seen it, cunt eyes and the eating of the dog shit, in my eyes are some of the less disturbing parts yeah. of the film. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the fellatio scene that uh, John Waters mm-hmm. regretted is one of the more disturbing parts of the movie. It is. Um, the uh, contortionist at the party. Ah, uh, yes. Probably one of the more disturbing parts of the film. Yeah. I thought it was interesting reading, the, reading about that because uh, that guy that does the contortionist act... I guess you'd call it. Um, yeah. He, uh, they say that he's unidentified and nobody, yeah. but I mean, they show his face. Like, <laughs> I was, how yeah. is he? Ident- just his name is in there yeah. and he's, he's not famous in any way. So like back in the seventies, if you're just, if your face appeared in a film, that wasn't the end. You, like you couldn't just Google who you are. Right. You know? So he did, you know, disappear into obscurity. That's true. Yeah. All right very different world before the internet that a lot of people are not going to know existed. Yeah. You know, like the generation after us is just, hey, this is how it's always been. The, the halcyon days, you know, yeah. back when you could show your asshole and people wouldn't be all up in your face about it. You know what I mean? You could have a man could have a little privacy. Google, <laughs> Google has ruined so much in this world. <laughs> I remember you used to be able to push your sphincter out of your butthole for fun. <laughs> And it it wasn't like it didn't define you, you know. <laughs> now you do that once, and it's just like you're that guy. Everyone's always asking you to do it. Oh, it's a nightmare. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring it up and shove it. <laughs> Listen, you're gonna, you're gonna Google me after this. <laughs> I know you are. Let me try and put what you're going to find in context. <laughs> See, things like this are all about context. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really would make a great kindergarten teacher yeah. if you would just. <laughs> Full disclosure. Full disclosure. <laughs> I have a very you particular. Get need to get ahead of the story. Yeah. I have a very particular set of skills. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, that guy was Liam Neeson. It was he? I should have known. Should have known. He does do that in <laughs> Taken 3. Not a lot of people saw that. It's in the... <laughs> Not a lot of people saw that exactly. one. Exactly. It's in the you know, deleted scenes. They talk about it in the Taken commentary. 3, subtext, I'm bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Man, I love I love when they they take like really good actors and place them in action films. And I don't I'm not setting that up as some joke. I really love that. Yeah. I love all those action films. Yeah, me too. where it's like that guy's not an action star, and when they put him in it, and you're like, this is the greatest action movie ever. Totally. Started with Die Hard, and then they just kept doing it, and it's amazing every time. It's true. Was he? Uh, Bruce Willis was just he was just David Addison before Die Hard, right? He was just on Moonlighting. Moonlighting. I think he did some comedy movies. But yeah. Maybe. Huh. But yeah, he was he was mostly known as a comedic actor. Yeah. A little bit of drama, I think. Interesting. When Bruce Willis wants to, he can kick ass in a scene. Yeah. I, so, <clears throat> you, you, you've watched uh, Kevin Smith talk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You ever you, you heard him talk about working with Bruce Willis? Sure. 
Okay, so he tells a story. Um, famously, he he talks mostly about how mean Bruce Willis was. Right. But the point of the the, the part that I that I found interesting is that he there's a scene and he wants Bruce Willis to do it like this scene in Moonlighting right. that he remembered. Right. And so he tells Bruce Willis that. And Bruce Willis goes like, do you know how demeaning that is right. to tell an actor to do it like he did in this role that he left like 20 years ago? And he just, you know, plains about it. And Kevin Smith feels awkward and sad. Right. <laughs> uh, he does a few more takes, though. And Bruce Willis does it like he was thinking about, yeah. like exactly as he wanted. And later when they're looking at the dailies, Bruce Willis walks by and goes, that one was for you. Right. So he, he did it like he did Moonlighting. Before I'd ever heard that story, I worked at a movie theater and I walked in on that film because you have to go check and make sure that sure. there's nothing wrong with the film. So you just end up watching like 30 seconds of a scene and then you go into the next one. Right. And I remember, again, this before I heard Kevin Smith talk, watching the scene and going like, holy shit, right. Bruce Willis just fucking rocked that scene. Yeah, like he just like, it was just this tiny little thing. But I'm like, good God. Yeah. This is some goofy cop movie. And he just really, really nailed that line. And it was the exact scene that Kevin Smith talked about. Like yeah. if he wanted to, <laughs> he can really, it's really interesting. I, I wonder if he's phoning it in or he just doesn't want to, he doesn't want to bring that, that level to everything. I could don't be. know. Yeah, it could be. It's funny. I recently, I hadn't seen um, Pulp Fiction in a long time because it's one of those movies I've seen a million times and you know, I haven't, I haven't watched it in years. And uh, I put it on recently and, you know, everyone talks kind of about how that's John Travolta's big, like his performance and that was his big kind of comeback. And it is, he's really good at it. But Bruce fucking Willis destroys that movie. Like (laughs) he steals that movie. Like he is, you're right. He's so great when he, when he wants to be. And I don't know if, if if it's just, if he doesn't unbreakable. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. It's great. I know. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah, Bruce Willis is the man. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's almost, it's a bummer when you, when you hear so many stories of them being jerks. Yeah. You know, you want to be able to go overrated, lame. Yeah. But then, but you just watch their work and you go, yeah, damn it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I really like the things they do. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, you could, you could, take some of some of that for like uh, there is such a huge difference um and i'm curious like because you okay so you were a fan of of john water's later stuff like like hairspray the kind of more which became Mm -hmm. i mean a a family a very family friendly affair you know with yeah with uh was it john i mean there's still like adult jokes but it became very mainstream yeah and, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, and John Travolta. And John Travolta, yeah, exactly. I think, uh, it's interesting to see he doesn't really have a style, you know, and it's interesting to see that he did eventually get that ability to make something mainstream, you know, late later on. And that, mm. you know, it, to go from a drag queen eating dog shit to, you know, they, you know, the hairspray being performed on Ellen, you know, it's, uh, well, to, to be fair, like, like it became that he did not make the mainstream version. Sure. Uh, the mainstream version was an adaptation of his film. Mm-hmm. So he never made that. He never, he never made something completely mainstream. Right. Um, but his like the the difference. Uh, I think the biggest difference would be the difference between um, like Pink Flamingos and Crybaby. Yeah, Crybaby could be seen by a young, maybe fourteen, fifteen year old, and you kind of be like, yeah, there's some weird parts of this movie that maybe they should, but it's not a big deal. It's not that bad of a movie, right. you know. You couldn't say that with Pink Flamingo. No. Uh, in fact, I think a lot of people would say that Pink Flamingo shouldn't be seen by fully grown adults. I felt that same way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think a lot of people want to point and say that he sold out in some way, um, just because I think people are prone to that. Yeah, right. I think maybe some people would say that I don't really like John Waters. I like John Waters doing John Waters films, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But there was, he 
I think they're still honest. I think they're still him. Yeah. I think what it was is, is quite possibly he grew out of who he was. I right. mean, I've made changes. I've deleted so much of the material I used to do when I was a stand up mm-hmm. um, because that's just not who I am. You know, like yeah. that was back then. And I had my issues I was going through and I, and I did shock comedy in many ways. And, and I don't do that anymore. And it's quite the opposite. I didn't sell out. Right. I, ju- I I got less money. I could have made more money doing that. Totally. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> about humor. Um, but you grow as a human being, and you should be allowed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And and you know, he became more skillful, got more mm-hmm. money to make things. Didn't have to rely on these. The like you say, the kind of shock value of things. You know, could 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 settle into a more more of who he was. You know, yeah. um, that's that's an interesting way of looking at it. You know, despite people who might have gotten started watching Pink Flamingos and then go and watch Crybaby and are like, "Fuck this! Where's why isn't Johnny Depp eating <laughs> shit?" You know, <laughs> now that I would like to see if he could have gotten Johnny Depp uh, <laughs> post Twenty One Jump Street to eat dog shit. Yeah. He would quite possibly be the greatest director of all time. I think you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Because it, now, I think I think Johnny Depp might do it now. He might. Yeah. You know. I, yeah. He's 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 an artsy guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. That when I saw they uh, they were making that other pirates movie, you know, I I just all I could think is you know his wife divorced him, you know, and he he just had to call some people up say. Good news, everyone. We're making another pirate movie. <laughs> Daddies need some money. Uh, yeah, he's got he's got some financial problems going. <laughs> yeah, uh, he sold a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he's got some issues going on. Yeah, well, good for him. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I I I'm not gonna pretend that if I know for a fact he he made it pretty young. Yeah. He wasn't quite a child star. He he got he, he became famous at a pretty young age. If I had gotten famous at any point before three days ago, yeah. I would have turned into a huge asshole. I, yeah, <laughs> like I, there was no way I had the emotional competency to to deal with fame yeah. in my teens or twenties. <laughs> right. I always think about that because I'm a huge um, Beatles fan, you know, and when mm. when. Beatlemania was going on and they were just the biggest thing in the entire world. You know, they were, George Harrison was 21 years old, you know, in in 1964, you know, like Mm -hmm. that's to be that how they ended up as well adjusted as they actually did, you know, is, is for at least most of them for the most part. As yeah. Much as, yeah. Cause he, the more I read about John Lennon, the more I go like, Oh, that guy was, that guy had his issues. The worst. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I didn't want to go quite that far, but no. yeah, he did some, no, yeah, no, I, I have the long, actually the longest book I've ever read. I have it right here is I've had it forever. It's like, it's like 1500 pages called the lives of John Lennon. And it, it chronicles a lot of that, uh, of the pretty, pretty nasty things that he did Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. regardless. But uh, yeah, I think that's a whole other podcast. Totally. A whole, yeah. It's just the, the, the musicians that you love that inspire you and that you would not, uh, not ever aspire to be like. Yeah, definitely not. Um, Yeah. I, uh, I think you're right in that. How, it's God to be that young and be that famous is, has got to be, I always wonder about like, um, like athletes, dude, you're straight out of college and like, you're going to be making millions of dollars, bro. And how, how you navigate that. I I have no idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, like when I was younger, I remember thinking to myself, if only I had a platform, because I have all these interesting ideas and, and, you know, like the people who hear them think they're, they're, they're engaged by them. If only I had a platform to get them out there. And then like, now I'm at my age and I'm like, thank God I never found that platform. Yeah. That would have been awful if I just like, just broadcast all that nonsense. Yeah, man. (laughs) Because it's one thing I might be broadcasting nonsense right now. Sure. But I'm not going into any like heavy political, social thing because I don't have confidence in it. Yeah. 
And I, you know, but back then I was so sure of myself and angry and then, you know, oh, thank God. Thank God I wasn't famous. <laughs> I don't know, though. You were still, uh, I, I've known you for quite a while. You, you, you always had, had more of a handle on that sort of stuff than like I did. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I would be less concerned about you having a platform than I would about me having one. <laughs> I, mean, I guess maybe part of me is just like I watch people get sort of torn up yeah. on um, social media for some joke they said or some horrible thing they did. And I've noticed that the best way to deal with that for a lot of people, maybe not everyone, but is to sort of just be like, uh, go to hell, like, leave me alone. Who are you? Right. I did what I did. Deal with it. Because people want you to sort of be broken down. That's why a lot of right. these people will harass and, and, and stuff like that. And it would be hard for me to do that because I'm like I'm almost like yeah I agree it was stupid yeah like you know like I can't really go like go to hell da, da, da. but you know I just don't believe that this idea of harassing people and doxing people is is productive in the slightest yeah so I mean I guess that would be the only defense I'd have but it, it, it's a really scary concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, and that brings us back to like we have the internet now, and pink flamingos would have been a very different internet. Uh, yeah, it would have been no big deal. I mean, you know, like it, it was uh, like you say, like you have two girls, one cup. Now you have um, you're always a few sa- uh, like you say wrong clips clicks away from seeing something much worse than pink flamingos. You know. Seven clicks of anal beads. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, um, I think it's just that it's because it's, it's not presented. Maybe it is, uh, just f- as, as, um, to be exploitative, it is presented as having a story. And I think that's one of the things that's so kind of disturbing about it is watching it and being like, are they try? were they trying to make a movie? You know, there, there's, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what, they were trying to do, you know, except I wonder how much he knew this is just a series of gimmicks. And then later on, I'll be able to make something of some, some substance. I I don't know. You know? Yeah. uh, It's hard to say. I I think it was a a commentary on, um, morality and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, also, I think he, it's just what he found funny, what he found engaging, yeah. I can you know, and, and I think to, I think people are sometimes sort of punished for having a dark sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, my mother said to me not long ago, she said, the things that you think are funny, everyone else just thinks are really sad. And I, <laughs> I thought that was interesting, you know, cause I'm like, well, I don't, I guess so. <laughs> But I think I do have a very dark sense of humor and whether that's, um, I don't know whether that's for a lack of, of a real one or, or not, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just the things I've, I just think that, that are, are funny. I had a, I had a, for a, I long, think a lo- for a long time, I had a, a noose that I found on the ground hanging in my bedroom and I thought that was hilarious, but you know, I don't know the people who came over, not so much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not, I think, uh, I think the problem that a lot of people have with a dark sense of humor yeah. is because they don't have it, they don't know where it comes from. Exactly. So because their sense of humor comes from a place of dismissal, you know, like if you're laughing at something, that means you don't care about it. Right. Uh, but that's not where people with dark sense of humor are coming from. Right. They're actually laughing because it's awful, because yeah. they recognize that it's terrible and their response is to laugh, is to try and deal with it by taking ownership of it in that way. Yeah. I've never thought about it that way. That's, and yeah. you can look at the people, the people who sometimes have the darkest senses of humor are the people who have to deal with very real, awful things all the time. Right. If you've ever known someone who's a vet, yeah. who's a doctor, a nurse, or, or works with like the criminally insane or something like that. They are people with dark senses of humor. Yeah, a yeah. good amount. Of <laughs> right. 
And it's because that's how are you going to do it otherwise? Right. How are you going to get through day to day going like, no, you do not laugh at this. Right. You deal with it 10 hours a day. Right. You're going to be in that perfectly straight, not laughing mood for 10 hours a day, five days a week. That's that's crazy. Yeah. And so a lot of these people who decide what is and isn't OK to laugh at are people who don't actually have to deal with that stuff. Sure. Not all of them. Yeah. Some of them decide that something's not funny because they had to deal with it, but they really need to, do need to understand that that's not the correct way to deal with something. Right, right. Interesting. Sorry, I got a little bit on my soapbox there. No, no, you're, you're right, though. I've never never thought about it that way, and uh, it makes me feel uh, better. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, I, know, I know a lot of people have very troubled childhoods. Mm-hmm. Um, who had very like people who maybe were abused by parents and stuff like that. Uh, dark senses of humor are are a defense mechanism. Sure, and they're very helpful defense mechanism. Right, right. I mean, yeah, it it's it is of kind of that. Uh, what else are you going to do? You know, that's that's a yeah. like a doctor or an EMT or something like that. That's a perfect uh, perfect example of that. You know, is is there's a. Uh, there's an a, uh, evolutionary theory that laughter comes from um, this habit that uh, certain primates have where they bare their back teeth and they uh, have an interrupted scream. Oh. So it's like, you know, their teeth are showing and they go like, ah, 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 ah. And the, the concept that they're doing it to another primate and they're saying like, you are of so little consequence to me because I will put these teeth in your neck so right. easily. Right. That I'm going to make a bunch of noise because I'm so not scared of you. Right. And if you kind of look at it, if maybe, you know, I feel like a lot of evolutionary biologists, they're just trying to think of something. Sure. <laughs> like, <they don't> really <laughs> know. Um, <laughs> but if that is the case, that kind of fits in that too, is, is basically you're looking at the worst, the most horrible things that have happened to you that if you don't laugh, you become paralyzed. Right. And you're going like, you know what? I'm taking control of you. I own you. I'm going to bite you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bite you, dismissive dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's? I'm going to bite you, matriarchy or patriarchy, depending on which right. website you're on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I said matriarchy first, so I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I think that you know it is a certain type of personality that would like that would find something like Pink Flamingos funny, and it and it and there are funny moments in it. And I, it's not that I didn't enjoy it. I, I mean, I did. I, I I did think it was funny. I think that I thought that Divine was great in it. I think that she, he, well, the character of Divine, she, uh, um, really is is a. Uh, go for it kind of actor, you know, and, and, uh, and oh, yeah. a lot of the lines are over the top and, and stuff like that, but, um, kind of grounded the entire thing, you know, it was, um, I couldn't, I say that I couldn't enjoy it because it is enjoyable and it is, I, I, if it wasn't for like this one thing kind of giving me a sure. hiccup, sure. Uh, and I'm not saying people shouldn't watch it or shouldn't have been made or anything like that. I'm just saying like, I couldn't get into it for that reason, but, um, it's so important to have the avant-garde and the outside, the outsider art, if you will. Uh, this isn't exactly outsider art, but but like some hillbilly had a (laughs) a camera in his room for four years and they found it after he died. Right. But, uh, But like, um, it's so important to have that. And this is one of the greatest details. Did you happen to see the trailer? Uh, was it the one with people talking about it who had just seen it? Yes. Yeah. They didn't show a second of the film. Right. Right. They, they just show people talking about it. And a lot of the people they show talk about it. I noticed were, uh, people who would have been sort of, uh, either on the outside of society or people who looked up to the outside of society. Mm -hmm. I noticed some sort of liberal, um, wealthy liberal looking people, which are people who really like outsider art and, and, you know, counterculture. But you also, you saw a fair amount of, uh, like an obviously big gay fan base. Mm -hmm. And especially in the seventies, 
that would have been the outsiders. That would have been the people who don't are told that they don't belong. Right. And I think having films like this, I think that's so important. Yeah. That, that, you know, like you need to have that connection when you feel like you don't belong. You need to have, you know, I love Rocky Horror Picture Show mm-hmm. growing up. And a big part of that was it created this people who felt that they didn't belong anywhere. Yeah. You know, like like the Rocky Horror Midnight shows and stuff like that. It created this weird community out of like, no one likes you, will like you just because you dressed up yeah. as <laughs> Tim Curry, as Dr. Frankfurter. Like, yeah. you're automatically accepted. Here. Right. I, uh, um, I I was him for Halloween one year at my all boys Catholic high school and got sent home immediately. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> my mom, my my I remember my mom thought it was amazing. She she was like, "Yeah, do it, whatever." You know, the consequences will be yours, my boy. But <laughs> but you do you do whatever you like. <laughs> you do you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember being with a friend of mine and talking about it was Halloween and what we we're going to do. And I was like, I'm going to watch Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's about a transvestite from Transylvania. Oh. How awesome is that? Right. And uh, my friend's mom just like getting really uncomfortable. Right. Is <laughs> that like 12? Yeah, know? right. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, uh, God, please don't talk anymore about the. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, um, and I think also, and imagine as we were talking about, when you have a dark sense of humor and it comes from uh, like a dark past, mm-hmm. I think also, uh, and I can't say from experience because I'm not, um, I'm not homosexual myself. Mm-hmm. So I always feel uncomfortable speaking for a group of people, sure. especially when I'm not sure. within that group. But I imagine that if society is telling you that you're dirty that you're disgusting simply for being you. Right. That a lot of people are going to go, well then fuck you. I'm going to be disgusting. Right. I'm going to be as gross as you're telling me I am. And they're going to dive deeper into that, that, um, that role that they're being thrown into. And I think that might be where this sort of like counterculture in the gay community came from with John Waters, uh, of, you know, this guy putting his legs behind his head and making his, his uh, anus protrude and, <laughs> right. and then like, uh, you know, it's going as gross as you can. I, right. I, I, met, I wonder if there's a connection. There. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, that sounds to me, um, there's a great, actually John Waters did this, like, I want to say one man show more like a talk. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but uh, he basically, he goes through his every movie that he ever did and just kind of talks about each, each one um, starting with, uh, with uh, Mondo Mondo Trash Mondo Trasho, I think is his first one, um, mm. and just kind of just kind of talks about it. And I feel I could be wrong, but I feel like he says something very similar to that. In that, that's it. Was it was ah. a, a response to being on the outside of, especially with his entire cast and you know the people who he has mm. work with him. You know, it is a response to like you think that we're weird. Well, I'll fucking show you weird if you want to see it. We yeah. we can do that yeah. if you want, you know. And uh, that's there's something pretty beautiful about that, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. enjoyable. I think there 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 was a part of me that connected with that in that you know, like I very I, I was I'm in a position where I could have connected if I was willing to. Mm-hmm sort of uh, inhabit a, a specific role, but I always found myself unable to do that. And so I felt like an outsider and, and it might have been by my own design in some way. But I think that is what attracted me to John Waters films sure. and to a lot of trash cinema, like the, the avant-garde and the weird and the homemade and the, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so I, that's sort of where I, I felt that might be uh, connected to creating in the first place. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm the same way. I've always felt more, mm-hmm. more, uh, connected to, you know, things that are on the fringe, <laughs> you know, as opposed to, which isn't, you know, that's, that's not a uncommon thing, you know, no, you know, not at, all. at all, but, um, but yeah. And especially like you say, the homemade, um, that I've always, always really liked things, you know, whether it was with punk rock music or, or, you know, um, 
the, the zine culture, you know, of people just putting <laughs> stuff out on their own, you know, and, and, and to a certain extent podcasts as well. That's just yeah. people doing stuff on their own. You know, I, I've always, always liked that because it's, it's very, uh, you can do whatever you want that way. And he sure, John Waters sure did. <laughs> 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 I wonder now because uh, you were saying like be, with the age of the internet that it wouldn't be as big a deal. Yeah, but maybe with the age of the internet, it would be an even bigger deal. Maybe instead of being this sort of counterculture, uh, stick it to the man kind of movie, it would have been this let's boycott any theater that shows it, right. and and feverishly look for dirt on the people involved, right kind of thing right because i know a lot of these actors when you go into old hollywood like they got some skeletons oh, in the yeah. closet that never came out oh yeah or if they did they did it like the end of their career right and it doesn't seem like that exists in the same way anymore mm-hmm. um what do you mean like being able to being able to keep stuff in in the yeah like once once people are on the lookout right then everything kind of comes to the surface. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Then you got to delete all your tweets. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, I wonder. I, I don't. I wonder how it would have been perceived. Um. I, yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, it still has. It's. It does have still a Rocky Horror Picture Show esque following where people will dress up when yep. it gets played and people will, um, you know, shout out lines and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, eat fake dog shit, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> according to, uh, hopefully fake, uh, according to John Waters, uh, the closest that the closest, uh, how do I put it? The, the, uh, the only thing that has captured the spirit of his films, uh, contemporarily is Jackass. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. <laughs> I think he's in an episode of Jackass or in one of the films. I, I think I think you're right. Yeah, I mean that that makes yeah. sense because it is taking um, it's laughing at. Um, that's one of the things I've always liked about Jackass. Whether you know whether it has any kind of if it does have any kind of artistic value, it is laughing in the face of death. You know, it is laughing at the void. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's 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 really childish, disgusting humor, totally. which uh, John Waters does seem to love. Yeah, um, and point at comedies that I think are better mm-hmm. than Jackass. Yeah, I think um, are are uh, funnier in their cleverness and that at no point did I sneer or look down my nose at, but I couldn't point at much that I actually laughed louder right. than I laugh at a jackass totally. film. Totally. Like the, the, the stomach hurting, yeah. uh, you know, wiping tears from my eyes moments. <laughs> yeah. They happen in every uh, jackass movie. I, I, I never really watched the show much, but it's visceral. The movies are, are, are very entertaining. Totally. Very visceral. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, I think, you know, uh, that sounded so that sounded so pretentious in connection to talking about the jackass movies, right? There. Yes. In visceral. The, yes. Very visceral. In the, I oof. think it, it, it's sort of um, from the, the, uh, Latin viscerae, yeah. meaning, uh, intestines and organs and inside <laughs> in the oeuvre of Knoxville, <laughs> it stands out. <laughs> <laughs> They have a certain uh, juve vive. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I think I think if there's if there's one thing you can say about uh, Pink Flamingos, you know, if, with everything that happens in it, every uh, horrendous act, uh, every disgusting thing, um, through all of that, it's it's incredibly overrated. Defined a genre. Mm-hmm led William S. Burroughs, one of the most famous authors in American history, to deem John Waters the Pope of Trash. Mm-hmm. And it is completely overrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so on, on that, um, mo- we're going to be moving forward to something uh, very, very different, changing gears in a big way. Uh, starting next week, I think we're doing uh, films that are about music, but not musicals. Yes. But, uh, yeah. 
Yep. Movies about music that are not musicals, or at least not technically musicals. I'm sure uh, at least one or two of them will have a music number in them, but they are not musicals. Sure. Um, yeah, they don't. It's not it's not rent, you know. Yes, yeah. it's not rent or stinging in the rain. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking. And also a, a, a profound part of that film is about like music in some way like it music plays a really big part of oh that yeah thing, so. yeah absolutely absolutely um so yeah looking forward to that and uh and we will uh, see you all next week um see you next week until then i'm michael j o'connor uh, james flutie and this was overrated <laughs>